So Goddesses, Witches and Queens was um, a project that we've just worked on with the Young Women's Creative Collective and it was a spoken word project. So we worked for a term on spoken word prompts, writing prompts, and we created some material which we then presented as part of a live sharing, uh, a live music and spoken word night at the Queen's Hotel in Bridlington. We worked from prompts, writing about goddesses, writing about witches, and writing about queens. Um, and we used these prompts as kind of iconic images of powerful women and what that meant to us. Uh, so we thought a lot about different kind of representations of witches and goddesses in stories, in fiction, in film, but we also thought more sort of specifically about different examples of women in our own lives that we thought embodied the qualities of these three iconic versions of womanhood. So I work for Arcade, but I'm also a member of the group and I wrote a piece which was, we'd workshopped for a while lots of, you know, strong women, goddesses or witches or queens or a woman we admired and we kind of took all that inspiration, wrote a piece and then performed it um, in a local pub with a nice little audience. I wrote a piece called Proudly Unladylike, which is, it's actually based off of my mum because we had one thing and I was talking about my mum a lot and she's always called me unladylike as of many other people and I just took pride in that thought of being unladylike and then wrote a piece about how I don't care and I love it and um, which was very empowering. I've been told I was unladylike a word used to try and put me in my place, to make me stop doing what I was doing, a scold. For some reason, the word felt like a compliment, like an encouragement. I've never worried too much about what it means to be a woman. I didn't realize it was something people genuinely cared about. How could I be too much or too little of something? I've known these girls for a couple of years now and when they first came in, some of them were really shy or they didn't know anyone or, you know, we'd, we were a bit nervous to read out work to each other and then, like, where we're at now is we'll write something in, like, ten seconds and then, like, be excited to share it with everybody else and everybody's so much more confident, like, forming friendships. There's, you know, the, the performance especially um, that's just been Goddesses, Witches and Queens. I just wanted to cry the whole time. I was just watching, like, people who a year ago struggled to kind of talk to us, never mind stand up on a stage in front of complete strangers into a microphone, which can be really daunting, and just deliver this piece of work. And it's not even just a script, it's something they've written, and they were all quite personal pieces of work about our own experiences, because it was all for International Women's Day, which is when the performance was, which is why the theme was very women-based, but a lot of the things that we do tend to be because we want to empower women. Um, but yeah, just seeing the way that the girls have grown is, is insane. We'd obviously gone into a local space that was a very well-known space, which was the Queen's in Bridlington. And it was a very relaxed, calm atmosphere. And we had people coming up to us, asking more about the group, asking when it was. Um, you know, it's a free group to join. Ideally, we'll have lots of other people. And I think that was the point of like just inserting ourselves within the community so that people, you know, sometimes it can be really daunting, you know, you see a group online and you think like, oh, I don't know when it's going, and then you just back out, whereas we put ourselves in that space to be like, oh, this is what we do, we're really friendly, we're doing some really cool stuff, come and do another project with us. And we did get some interest, so hopefully with the next project, we'll just grow and then it'll just continue that way forever. My army will be an army of molten lava giants. They are hard to the core and stoic but kind to me. If I am injured and need some help, I will rise them from the ground and destroy all those who dare to harm me and my people. 
In my biggest basement, there is a very special dungeon, one for all the people who dare to look down on women just because they are pow more powerful than them. Bibdi Bobdi, bye bye. Brought forth from dust, thine sacred form, sympaternal matriarch, in paradise, sun kissed and warm, Eden, the supernal park. Yet heaven holds no place for thee, for though they know not crime nor sin. I was born when I left you. I was free from the start, but you gave me something I could do without. Uh, I'm Emily. I'm a member of the Young Women's Creative Collective. So I was performing during Goddesses, Witches and Queens, which was terrifying, <laughs> but rewarding. My piece was about things that I wish that I could say to my 16-year-old self, which was a, a mix of encouragement and uh, a gentle reprimanding for, <laughs> for behaviors that I, I was exhibiting at the time. I think this term, we've kind of been getting more into grips with what makes us us in a way, rather than um, our backgrounds. Well, I suppose in a way it's kind of kind of similar, but this term, I think we've more developed on who we are as people rather than where we've come from. It was terrifying performing it. Like, I am not a stranger to standing on stage and regurgitating a monologue or pretending to be somebody else, but there was something about standing on a stage and performing poetry that made me very uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't regret it. I think it was good to work on that side of performing, especially public speaking, in such a way, but it was much harder than I gave it. It was much harder than I thought it was going to be. I thought I would stand there and speak and perform as I'd done before, but it was it felt really different. These are 10 things I need to tell my 16 year old self. Number one, the world is out to get you. It will do this by belittling your interests and stealing your voice. Don't let it. Number two, you are not unique for having interests. Not every girl is the vain, vapid princess that you perceive them to be. They're not your enemies. You'll do some self-reflection later on and come to some realizations about yourself, but that's not until university, so don't worry about it yet. <laughs> Number three, you are great just the way you are. You are smart, you are creative, you are loved. I know one of our group members struggles a lot with um, their confidence and her ability to speak, and this was the first time that she's performed in front of a crowd reading what she's written. And I was so buzzed for her <laughs> that she was able to do that. So I think in terms of confidence, it's, yeah, it's, it's getting there. I'm a human being just like any other. I live and I breathe and I love and I cook and I clean because apparently that's all I'm here to do. I'm a woman. I failed to heal a man in a time where men could not heal men either. A man would not be punished. But I am burned because I am a witch. No, I am burned because I am a woman. I am a woman who tried her best because my best was all I could do. I am a woman. I fight for my rights. But I am seen as silly and weak-willed. I tried to learn. They shun me. Yet my words are as poetic as theirs. Not all queens wear crowns. For some, it's a feeling inside them awakened from a deep slumber. The feeling of courage, of power. That girl on a bus, it's her first time leaving the house in 12 days. She is strong and she is brave. And she wears that feeling with her head all held high. I've been pouring at the door and I'm falling. Catch me now or oh, forever hold. And when I think about like the individual journeys that each and every one of them have made, in terms of their own kind of sense of self and their ownership of their own voice. It's really, yeah, it, it, it's very impactful work that the group is doing and I'm really proud to have been a part of it. I just felt so proud of them for getting up there 
I mean, you know, my, my part, part of my job, like standing up and gobbing off in pubs, is something that I do a lot of. But it takes a lot of guts, and I think they all stepped up to that microphone with huge amounts of bravery and passion. And yeah, it was really inspiring to see, and I was mega proud of all of them. A space to inspire. Over a table full of snacks, we have built our own community. Friends. Friends. We've learned to believe in ourselves, to be confident, to be brave. Together we grow. Moving forward in our independence, rebelliousness and originality. We continue to allow ourselves to unapologetically be women. We are the Young Women's Creative Collective.